So this was the first question in the Q&A session at the FIC Congress in Berlin, which was how to localize English dates automatically. When I first looked at this question, I thought that oh, this is going to be fairly straightforward, but actually it's not. And the reason it's not is because Studio takes its dates from your operating system. So if the dates that are written in the source do not match the patterns that are here in Studio, which are drawn from the operating system of your computer, then Studio can't recognize them automatically. So we're going to look at two ways to handle this. The first, using Term Injector, which is a tool on the Open Exchange, and the second using the SDLX Lift Toolkit. You can see the full presentation on this using the slide share, but I'm just going to go straight into Studio and just explain. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my project settings for this file and I'm going to add an ordinary file, an ordinary translation memory. And then if I go down into this segment, you can see when I do this, the dates aren't recognized because this does not change. So if I go in here and I edit the source and I change this to the 1st January 2014, which is a long date. When I do that, you can see it now has a blue underline on it. And if I press control comma, it automatically substitutes it for the correct German because I'm going English to German as to January um, 2014. So that works. So if I just go back and change this now, we're going to look and see how we can handle this because you obviously can't go in and edit the source on every single document and sometimes you might not even be able to edit the source. In this case it's the docx file so it's fairly straightforward. So I'm going to go to my project settings. First of all I'm going to remove this translation memory and then we're going to take a look at the term injector. So what I'm going to do is click on add and this will allow me to add my term injector translation provider as a translation memory provider. When I do that the first thing I have to do is select the translation memory I actually want to use. So I'm going to use the same one I was using before, the dates TM. And this is being selected inside the term injector provider. So what this allows me to do is create a set of rules that can be applied to the results that come from that translation memory and then allow those rules to change some of the text into a different format or a different layout before they're presented in the translation memory results window. And I do that through a file, just a text file, that can contain a set of rules. And we'll take a look at those rules in a second. So I click on OK. I've added my term injector translation provider and I click on OK. Now you can see what's happened immediately is that although this translation memory has nothing in it, I'm actually getting a 0% match in my translation memory. And this is because of the, trans the term injector. So it takes a copy of the source and then if it recognizes a pattern, it replaces the text in that source with the corrected pattern. And in this case, I want this 1st of January to actually become the 1st of January. This is important. So the way it works is in my txt file. I just open that in a text editor so you can see I have a set of rules. So the rules are basically, this is the first regular expression from here to here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for a number here which will be the first, second, third, fourth of something like that. And I'm storing it as a back reference. That's what the brackets do. And then I'm looking for the stust, nud, rud, or thuth at the end of those numbers. So the first, second, third, or fourth, or the 14th, 15th, 22nd, 28th, whatever. And then I'm looking for the particular month. And then I replace that with the first back reference, which will be the number inside the back reference here followed by a dot and followed by the translation for January. This third regular expression, this is required by the term injector to allow it to do the replacement correctly. 
And for full instructions on that, I'd recommend you go to the Term Injector website. I'm not going to cover that here. So I'll go back to Studio. So I can actually apply that translation by pressing Control T, which puts it in. And then if I replace this first part with the German translation, if I can type it correctly, wait to Mr. Esther Januar, and then I confirm that translation. What happens is when I move into the next segment, you can see that although I'm getting a 65% match, it has correctly translated the 2nd of February for this fight of February. So if I move down through here, you can see that on each of those segments, it's correctly doing the translation. Now the reason I only have a 65% match is because Studio doesn't recognize this. It's only the term injector that recognizes this. So Studio is, is finding a comparison between, in this case, today is the 15th of December, and the segment that was entered in the translation memory, which was today is the 1st of January. And it's finding that to be a 65% match. So this is not ideal. It is pretty good because it's giving me the correct translation and it's allowing me to handle these numbers, but it's not perfect. So what we're going to do next, I'll just undo all of those segments. Oops, like that. So what we're going to do next then is go back to my project settings. And instead of looking at the term injector, we're going to look at a way of handling this using the SGLX Lift Toolkit. So the first thing we'll do is remove the term injector translation provider. And we'll just add back a simple translation memory. The same one we inserted previously. Um, and that's it. So just double check. So we've still got our translation memory there. No results and no dates, no dates found. So I'll close that file. And then I'm going to go to my welcome view and I'm going to start up a tool called the SGLX Lift Toolkit that I've added to Studio. It's a free tool from the Open Exchange. And this allows me to search and replace the text. So the idea here is that I'm going to change the source text to a format that is recognized by Studio so that it can handle it in a more logical way. So to do that, first of all, I'll just go and find the, the project, which is in here. And I'm just going to drag that SDL proj file into here, which gives me my file. So there's my file. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter a regular expression into here. I've just copied and pasted it. You can find it in the PowerPoint. And um, if you like to look in the source to use regular expressions, and you'll see that as long as I've got the file selected here, if I click on find all, this expression should go through and it finds, I can click on here just to see them all at once, it finds every date that I'm looking for and gives me an opportunity to be able to replace it. So what I'm going to replace it with, because I need the full date format, is I'm replacing it with dollar one, which is the number here inside the number by itself inside these first set of brackets just here. Then replace it with dollar two, which is my second set here. This is a non um, a non capturing back reference. This second one, so dollar two here is the second part, which is the date. And I'm adding a year to it. The year is required to make sure it becomes a full date. Now, if I click on preview. This allows me to see what will happen to that before I actually change it in Studio. So you can see I've changed these dates now. I've got rid of the STNDRDTH and I've added a year to it. And the same thing has happened to every single one of those files. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to say replace all. That's it. If I now come back to Studio and I open up that file, what I should have now is all of those dates should have all of those numbers anyway should have been replaced with the new date there we go and what that means is when i click on here 
Studio can recognize it. And now if I confirm that one, it should auto-propagate all the rest. And I've got all the correct dates in there. But it's not completely perfect because I don't want the 222 in there. And this, so now this gives me an opportunity to explain why I use 222. And that was because I can change it. So if I just save that and close it, what I can do then is I can go back to my SDLX toolkit, get rid of this, and I'm going to this time search the target. But I'm going to search for that date and the 222. And I'm going to replace it with the first part of the date only and not the 222. So if we just take a quick preview, or if we just do a find all first of all, so you can see it finds them. So it finds all of those dates. If we preview it to see what the change is going to be. So it gets rid of all those dates, which is exactly what I want. And then I just replace all. I can now close the toolkit. And if I double click on my file again, this time when the file opens up, we should see that those target dates have been completely changed. I apologize for the amount of time this is taking to open. This is because I'm having a little bit of problem here with um, Camtasia while it's running. In fact, any video recording software seems to be slowing my computer down dreadfully. So I'm having to do it in bite-sized chunks and piece the video together to get a longer video. But anyway, you can see I've got what I want now. The drawback, the biggest drawback, of course, is that their dates are still like this. So if you've received the file in a package from somebody else, this might not be the best mechanism to use because they might not be too impressed if you give them back the SDLX lift and they then use it to update their TM. That might not be the best solution. But if you're working for yourself, it's a perfect solution because you can just save the target file and give it to your customer and you've handled all, handled all the dates really easily. And that's it.